Hello coders. So let us look at this program today where we're going to learn a lot of things. Now, before we move on, what I would advise you all to do is just like, you know, you learn anything new, you want to take a little bit of notes on it. You want to pause, you want to process that information. So it's good to do that. So, you know, you, you want to just pause here and get yourself a book, which you can then maintain throughout. You know, just because you're learning something online doesn't mean it's it should be all up there in the air, right? Okay, so let us now continue. The OTPs, the one-time passwords. So every time we make a transaction online, when it wants to authenticate and you know make sure that we are whom we are claiming to be, most of the transaction applications these days will send a six digit or sometimes maybe a four digit number and when we enter it back it knows it is you know the person who's do it, doing the transaction now this one time password if you just look at it if you think about it what is it so here is when i want you to think and actually write down on a paper so what is what is this digit number is it something which, you know, can you, can you guess what is the what is the number coming in? Or what kind it is? Randomly generated. Like you, do, you don't know what they're coming. They are randomly generated. So I'm going to do the same steps like we did to create a new Python file. And what we're going to do is six digits OTP. That is the program, the code we're going to be writing. So basically, what we're looking to do is a small code to generate a six digit random number. That's what we're going to be. Now let's pause and step back and look at when we want to code something like this, what are the key features of the programming language that we're going to be using? A programming language becomes more and more easy to use and allows for fast development because of the way its standard libraries are. And Python standard library is extensive. It contains lots of built-in modules that, you know, that will give you standard solutions for things, you know, for problems and um, things that you use, that you need to use in programming, yeah? And, and this is applicable to most of the uh, popular languages. As we said, we want to be able to generate a random set of numbers. And so when we want to use a particular module in Python, the first thing we have to do is import it. And the keyword for it is import. So when I use the word keyword, it basically means that word can only be used for that specific purpose which Python has designed it. You, know, you cannot use it for anything else. It's a reserved for that purpose. So import is one such keyword. So you're going to import a module called random. And this is a feature of this editor, this PyCharm editor, right? As you started typing random, it showed up the random module. So you know you got it correct. So we are importing the random module so that we can now use a function from it. Now, what is a function? A function is something which does something very specific. So you already use one function as we started. Yes, we use the print function. So we did, we just go back to hello world. We did print and we did round brackets. So print is a function which you used. Now here, what we will do is we will use from the random library, its function. So when we put, how do we, access the different functions in a particular module by putting a dot after it. Okay, so this module random, it contains all these different kind of functions. And this is where all your exploration is going to come in. It's very important that you keep exploring on your own. Now here, random, so let's look at random dot random. Now, to see what it have, what it does this function does. We can only know if we are able to look at what does this function 
return what does it do when it executes so when it just runs like this we won't be able to really see the outcome of it there are so that some the easiest way to to see what is an outcome of it is to be able to print it print round brackets and that's the start of round bracket and we'll need a close round bracket so if we just print this now let's see what happens so i'm going to run here this green now this is one thing you have to make sure that either current file is listed here or the name of this file is listed here okay if it is some other name of the file here so and when you play run it will end up executing some other file and you will be thoroughly confused and trust me this happens a lot so if you look at the bottom of the run cons console it is running six digits ottp and it is running and giving us one random value which is in decimal format now we are not looking at decimal numbers you know in otp we are looking like at six digit number so we will look at some other functions of rand so we'll try rand range and how does that work okay i hope you are able to see this on the editor when we calling the function rand range it is showing us what are the data this function accepts okay so what does this accept it takes a start value a stop value and then there are some other optional values now when we are looking at six digit otp what is the start value we are looking at yeah so whenever we asking these questions best is that you know you scribble down on your paper so that you know you are with us as you are learning so when we are doing a six digit number so 1 2 3 4 5 one and five zeros yeah this is your starting number and what is your stopping 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 so as far as between the start and between this end if it generates a number that will be your six digit number so i am going to run this again yeah but when i run this again just look at it nothing happened right and you're like ah uh, what happened because we haven't printed it right so even it executed we don't know what happened so remember when we do print we put a open brace here so we have to make sure we run a put a round brace here but in case if we forget to do this you know which which is very likely that you will so in that case when we run it you will see that in the outcome you will get a proper error listed down now what is the error say that in this file six digits otp.py line 6 you have a error okay now you will wonder there is nothing in line 6 why is it giving an error so basically what is happening is because your previous line did not end properly it having it's it's showing us the error on line 6 because there is nothing which the program the file has not ended properly so we are going to close the bracket and then we are going to run this now here you will see that random dot random generated a decimal and random dot ran range has generated a six digit otp and just run it every time and just observe the value changing you will see every time it is generating a unique six digit otp right and all this you know you are able to do in this one line of function so we actually don't need this so i'm going to delete so all we have done we have imported the module random we have called the function rand range of random we have passed it a start value and an end value and we have printed it right there are three things we have done here you have to code yourself please do not copy paste you know understand the concepts and do it yourself it is very very important i cannot iterate it enough let me also introduce you all to panchanta programming scratch coding uh, tutorials so these are set of 30 amazing engaging challenges actually so scratch is mit's block code coding platform 
it's extremely friendly to learn how to build logic and all these basic concepts in programming. It, and the reason I started to talk about it is because the first challenge here is to generate the six digits OTP. If this is your first time ever, ever coding, you would have really gained having started with this. You know, if you just spend about 10, 15 days, it's a solid bit of learning. Uh, you build logic. And if you have young siblings, especially, and, you know, this, this is what children from grade five onwards, even some grade four children are able to do on by themselves. But very ideal for grade six, seven, eight, before children uh, get into a text-based programming like Python, totally encourage it. And if you're in new learning in college, then you know, it's all right. You can just have your uh, younger siblings get started with this.